before I start this video, I want to ask you to support me by subscribing to my channel. And please like this video if you find it helpful. And of course, if you have some questions or suggestions, welcome to the comments. And we jump right in. In simple terms, a GWT token is a string that contains information about the user and the permissions they have. This information is encrypted and signed, making it difficult to forge or tamper with. GWTs are commonly used for authentication and authorization purposes in web applications. Typically, when a user logs into a web application or API, the server generates a GWT and returns it to the client as a response. The client then includes the GWT in the authorization header of subsequent requests as a bearer token which the server can use to verify the user's identity and permissions. In this way, the bearer token acts as a temporary credential that allows the client to access protected resources with uh, uh, revealing the underlying GWT. The server can then validate the bearer token and use the information contained within it to authorize or reject the request. Now let's analyze what the GWT token consists of. So let's uh, go to the gwt.io website, which will help you decode it. As you can see, the components of the token are highlighted in different colors. There are three in total. The first is header. Hear it. The second is payload. Hear it. And the third is verify signature. Hear it. The header is a JSON object that typically includes two properties. Elch, which specifies the algorithm used to sign the token, and type, which specifies the token type. The payload of a GWT token contains the actual claims about an entity, typically a user, and additional metadata. The payload is also a JSON object that consists of set of k-value pairs, where each k is a claim and each value is the value of that claim. The claims can be used to provide information such as the user ID, user roles and expiration time of the token. There is standard RFC 7519 which defines structure encoding rules for GWTs as well as the processing rules for validating tokens. It also specifies several standard claims that can be used to provide information about the entity such as the issuer subject and expiration time. According to the standard, there are three types of claims – registered, public and private. Registered claims are set of predefined claims that are not mandatory, but recommended. Here you can see their complete list. These registered claims are used only in the sense in which they are described in the standard. Public claims are custom claims that are defined by the application of the user. Public claims should be defined in a way to avoid collision with other claims. In fact, in order to somehow standardize public claims, there is a specification from YANA, JSON Web Token Claims, which defines some standard names for the public claims. You can explore them by visiting this URL. Of course, I leave all the links in the description under the video. Hear it.
And the third type of claims is private claims. They are custom claims that are defined by the user or the application and they are used to share information between parties that agree on using them. And the third part of the DWT token is a signature. It is used to verify that the message was not changed along the way and comes from the expected sender. The signature is created by combining the encoded header and encoded payload with a secret key using the algorithm specified in the header. The resulting stream is then signed and the signature is added to the end of the token. Overall, a GWT token is a secure way to represent and transmit information between parties. It is self-contained, meaning that it contains all the information needed to verify the token's authenticity and to determine the user's identity and permissions. And for today, it's all. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this video and see you next time.